Hi there, in this video I'm going to do a test assembly and a trial run of this uh, little odds and ends engine and uh, it's quite exciting or maybe the other word for it is nerve-wracking <laughs> So there are a couple of things that I've made off camera and uh, this is one of them, it's very fine, it's the fuel mixer quite difficult to video that and the other item is the exhaust rocker arm which runs from the cam gear which you can just see in this shot up to the exhaust valve and this is a view of the cam gear engaging with the rocker arm and you can see there that's where the uh, governor lever the catch lever keeps the exhaust valve open if I open up the governor, the catch lever goes like that and it'll hold it open. Like that. Once it gets up to a particular speed, then when it slows down, it'll release. Like that. So it all seems to be functioning okay. Now some of you may recall that I modified the crankshaft gear and I put a boss on here and some grub screws to uh, lock it in place and that really um, is a bonus now because it, it gives you really fine adjustment on the exhaust valve timing. So for the exhaust valve uh, what it needs to do is um, once it's hit the firing stroke down here um, just really before bottom of the stroke it needs to be starting to open the exhaust valve down here which is just slightly out of shot but I'll, I'll try and demonstrate this so we're coming to the bottom of the stroke on the power stroke and you might be able to see there it's just starting to open So on the upward stroke, that's where all the exhaust fumes come out. And we're nearly at top dead center. And it's just closed there. And that is just around top dead center. So I think I've got the exhaust timing right. Now it's nearly 50 years uh, since I messed around with points <laughs> uh, on a BSA Bantam and a, an MG Midget and uh, I've got this uh, 0.2 microfarad condenser which I think should be okay and um, the idea is that these points need to open um, just round about um, top dead centre uh, maybe just maybe just slightly after maybe and uh, I don't know whether you can see there but just opening round about there and you probably can't see here but it's uh, near top dead centre now if I put um, a multimeter on it and measure resistance So we've got contact there and as, as we turn it round it's just gone off there and that's the uh, position of the uh, crankshaft so it's pretty much spot on top dead centre maybe I don't know um, a degree out or something like that Okay, so we're all wired up, and uh, that's a spark plug that uh, Simon Burt made and kindly sent me. So let's see if we can get a spark. Hey, that looks good. And I'll just check that it uh, sparks on top dead centre.
There, it's just gone. Looks pretty good to me. So I'll uh, put the spark plug in the engine. Uh, I'll put some fuel in the container. And uh, we'll give it a bash. Well, I've just had another thought before uh, trying to fire it up. Is uh, just to check compression. So the spark plug's in. And uh, there's no fuel in at the moment. That looks pretty good compression wise. A lot of resistance there. So all, everything's pointing in the right direction. Never tried this before. First time. happening <laughs> it might be flooded so I have to do some more checks and uh, I'll get back to you well, after doing some checks, I've concluded that it's uh, compression. Um, I think it's a problem with the uh, piston rings. I've covered these holes up. I know it's a crude test, but I mean, it should hold compression there, but it isn't. And you can actually hear a hissing noise there. So, um, that needs sorting. Now I've had a bit of an email exchange with Earl and he suggested uh, trying to run the piston rings in by you know maybe putting it on the lathe or applying a motor to uh, get it to turn like that for say half an hour or an hour um, but it won't fit onto my lathe and I've not got an electric motor apart from a drill um, which I don't want to sort of like attach to the shaft so I've been doing that for sort of the past half hour <laughs> um, and applying lubrication uh, but I've seen absolutely no difference in compression and um, you know if, if you look at that if you on the compression stroke if you turn it to the top it's just lost compression and that I don't think there's any compression loss um, you know where the valve body is or where the piston ring is it's all coming out of here um, and in comparison I'll show you the farm boy so if I turn the farm boy onto the compression stroke and hold it there for many many seconds that's fantastic that's how it should be. Now I just had a thought, I've uh, took the piston out and checked that the piston ring gaps are uh, at opposite sides and they are, so that's not what the problem is. And uh, I just thought as a double check, I'd, I'd just switch the orientation of the piston ring round 180 degrees and see whether that makes a difference. And no. Nah. Really bad. So I think my only option at this stage is to uh, make a new piston and uh, put a vite on o-ring on it. So I've just made a new piston for an o-ring and uh, the specification is very similar apart from the groove for the o-ring. There's only one o-ring and uh, the depth of the groove is 16 thou greater than the section and the width of the groove is 11 thou bigger than the section. So fingers crossed, I'll get a better result. Slight improvement.
feels a bit lumpy, does that? So I think there might be a timing issue. Well, that's a lot better. But I've found that the governor's latching on, stopping it from uh, increasing the speed. OK, so I've restricted the governor a little bit. Obviously still issues, but we're slowly getting there. Well, Earl's come up with a great suggestion, and I don't know why I didn't think of it. And uh, that is to replace the spark plug with an adapter and uh, connect a compressor to it. Okay, so I've stopped it at 40 psi. And I can hear a very slight leak, nothing, nothing massive. There's loads of pressure there. Really difficult to turn that. The compressor's off now. So it's just dropped 5 psi. If I turn it that way, I can hear air coming out. But that's pretty good. Steam engine. If I turn the compressor on, see if we can run it on air. So, for comparison, I've put the uh, piston in with the cast iron rings. And already I can see air escaping out of the oil hole. So there's obviously um, air passing the piston rings. It's quite a lot of pressure there though, but you can hear it leaking. Well I've uh, messed around trying to get the uh, piston with the cast iron rings to uh, seal properly right, I just can't get them to uh, seal right so I've put the piston in with the Viton ring and we'll give it a try. And uh, I've disabled the governor for the moment. Pretty happy with that. Well that was a bit of a disappointment not being able to get the cast iron rings to work and uh, I'd like to thank Earl for all the help and support he's provided me with trying to uh, advise me on how to uh, get these uh, rings run in uh, but I just couldn't get them to work and uh, it, it's a shame really because my next project I was thinking about making a V-twin and uh, I think I'll certainly have to master making um, cast iron rings for that. But anyway, this little engine seems to run okay on the Viton ring. Needs a bit of tweaking here and there in terms of like the governor and needs some stronger springs on it. Um, but uh, all in all, uh, I'm sort of quite happy with the result. And uh, what I need to do now is to strip her down, um, apply some paint, do a bit of polishing, put her on a stand, and uh, I'll have to make a fuel tank, but I'll, I'll do that off camera. And, uh, once I've done that, I'll do a final run video. Um, so uh, I hope you found this video of interest and I hope to see you later.